Hey everyone, how you doing? This is Nick from Raw Skills Bushcraft Survival and Adventures. Uh, today I figured let's go through the top 10 most useful books that I own um, that have helped me throughout the years of me learning bushcraft. So stick with me and we'll get through them. So at number one, this has been my most useful bushcraft book for me. This is my oldest one. I've had this for a good few years now and uh, he this guy this gentleman here Ray Mears and one of my idols uh, he's known as, known in the bushcraft world as being one of the one of the best bushcrafters out there and woodsman uh, it's a very good book uh, all hand-drawn pictures as you can see I'll show you, show you a few of the pages of each of these because I don't want to drag it on too much so he goes through all the basics from uh, Clothing, well, very basic kit list, into tents, very little bit on tents. And then we're going to the more advanced stuff, this is uh, natural navigation, natural indicators. A little little bit on that, but then he goes into digging sticks, uh, fire building, uh, natural fire building, so hand drill, bow drill. And it's all neatly hand drawn, and it just gives you some brilliant tips basketry projects things like that and I find this has been the most clear and most uh, concise so far um, it doesn't give you too much written words so you don't get lost in the words um, so yeah I like pictures <laughs> I sound so simple saying that but uh, yeah pottery it's this is this is my number one for me it's been brilliant and it stuck with me through lots of years now and taught me lots so um, coming in at close close second I just got this one I've just read through it is bushcraft by a legendary Canadian bushcraft uh, woodsman Morse Kahansky again um, this one if if you're in the, the northern woodlands if you're in the boreal forest this is a must-have to me this is a uh, every bit of detail and knowledge that this gentleman has is basically in this book um, all hand drawn this is where he's taken lots of notes over the years and he's hand drawn everything in so uh, yeah, he goes everything from axes to chopping down how to chop down trees safely right through to basket yeah basket tree making again just a different way this is with birch bark uh, all the way up to handy trees for bushcraft so a very good book, um, lots of writing in this, lots of concise descriptions and drawings so you can get lost and brilliant book, um, again I enjoyed reading this one and I've also got, got the copy on my phone too just to flick through every now and again and play with uh, just for ideas and if, I'm, if I can't think of something, if I can't remember something, I've, I've got a, this is a good little uh, reference guide for me, so that's that one. Third, I'm going to say Ray Mears Essential Bushcraft. Again, my, my, one of my favorite idols here, Ray Mears. Um, this one here is a bit more basic. All cut, this is all color, very good color pictures. And uh, very simply drawn. It, it gives you just enough for you to know what he's talking about. And uh, again, it goes through exactly the same stuff as the other two books. This is making cordage out of, out of willow bark. Uh, very, very, very good, uh, very vague pictures, but you get the gist of it from them. Uh, not A little bit of knot work. I mean, there's only so much you can get in, in these books without it dra dragging on and being too much. Uh, a little bit of first aid at the back too. And he also talks about some indigenous, uh, indigenous plants and a little bit on fungi and edible, and basically edible, edible plants there. And a little, yeah, like I said, a little bit of indigenous stuff too from around the world. So this is uh, this is my third, number three book. To me, it's been very helpful too. And I often like sit down and read this and get a few ideas as well. This is a kind of a series. This is my fourth most handy book. This is this is Dave Canterbury, trapping and bush uh, trapping, uh, gathering and cooking wild edibles. Again, uh, Dave has um, he has Bushcraft 101 and Advanced Bushcraft 2. All very good books. It's a very good series. I think he's actually bringing out like an encyclopedia 
bible of bushcraft and uh, wilderness skills soon so i'll be keeping an eye out for that um but this has been a very good book to me to help me help out with we're learning some trapping skills and uh, different recipes and stuff the pages um again all ha pretty much hand drawn i do like the hand drawn stuff because you see the 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 editor the the person who's written it has basically sat down and actually put a lot of thought and effort into it so um, the one downside I would say is he's put he, he put some edible plant pictures in here, but they're very vague. I mean, what does what does this plant look like in winter? What does this plant look like in winter, etc. For example, I know, we know we know what cattails look like in winter, but um, it's not. There's, to me, there's no point in putting that in here unless it's a bit more detailed. So yeah, so that's that book. Um, but yeah, his series has been brilliant. So I, I would recommend picking up a couple of those, at least the, the basic Bushcraft 101, because that's a good start for you if you're just starting out in Bushcraft. And uh, yeah, work your way up, work your way up the levels. And he also has a first aid one, I believe, to a wilderness first aid one. So that's something else to look out for. Okay, so that's my four Bushcraft ones. Moving on, this is the only, the only survival guide I own. Of course, it's little lofty Wiseman's SAS pocket survival book uh, I, I have this one this is a great little read uh, it's got everything in it it's everything in it in small print this is tracking um, campcraft everything uh, a lot of these books cover but in a survival sense um, inflate, reinflating your dinghy and rewriting your dinghy uh, it covers everything I mean to me it is, it is it, everyone should have a, co a copy of this book as well this is a brilliant little guide I, uh, I put it in a sandwich bag and I carry it with me when I go into the woods because you know what it's fun to read and uh, it's good to test out some of the stuff as well um, natural medicine it goes through a little bit of vague natural medicine of course don't play around with the wild edibles unless you are n you know what you're doing and um, get multiple sources of information with uh, with wild edibles and has a few pictures of wild edibles but I wouldn't trust those to be honest I'd look through the, the more um, concise guides that I'm going to show you in a second so that's that's number five that's my SAS survival guide brilliant little pocket book it's only just over four and a half inches tall by uh, by three and a half so brilliant little book recommended don't have one pick it up great book uh, so number six to me has been my edible medicinal plants of Canada. Of course, not everyone lives in Canada, but I, I I pair this with an app on my phone, which I'll show you in a bit. I have some apps for you to to show you too. Um, I pair this with an app on my phone, and most of the time it gets me there. Um, again, uh, it could do with a lot more pictures, but the descriptions and everything can help too. And as long as you pair this up with another source of um, information, you should shouldn't be steered too far wrong and of course just pay attention to the poisonous plants um, there's a there's a whole section on it okay poison oak poison ivy uh, etc it's all color coded all the way through the book as you can see there uh, very good very good book with lots of information on it I tend to I tend to get my information from other places and I bookmark it so I've got at the top there I've got base wood so I can quickly get the base wood and then if I can't remember what it's for, what it's good for, and it's bow drill, so things like that. So that's Edible Medicinal Plants of Canada, and I pair that with Trees of Ontario. Because, of course, I live in Ontario at the moment. And then nudge, nudge. So these two here are very good to work together. Basically, I can take that with me into the woods. It's a lot lighter than this. And, yeah, again, pair these with apps on your phone. You can't go much wrong, really. Um, the only thing I find about learning edible plants um, by myself is it takes a long time, it takes a while. So, because I gotta make sure. So, that is, uh, what's that? One, two, three, four, five. That is number six and number seven of my selection for my top ten. Number eight. This is a great little guide. This is a pocket guide to wild mushrooms. Um. Again, be very careful when you're, you're going out trying to harvest wild mushrooms. Know what you're doing and make sure you are 100% uh, in the right when it comes to knowing 
what mushroom you've picked and what mushroom you're going to eat. Because you, if you mess up, then it could mean death. Because there are some, there are some, there are a lot of deadly mushrooms out there. Um, but yeah, so far this book here has been the best book I've found for detail. Uh, you'll see there lots of lots of good clear pictures. Uh, it also tells you distinguishing features and gives you a look-alike on the left there, or on the right, on the right to you. So it's a very uh, yeah, it's a very good book. It doesn't have all the mushroom types in there. But it's got a good load of mushrooms, especially if you're in the northern northern, northern woods in the boreal forest. This will be enough for you to help help you identify mushrooms. Um, and it basically goes through with a color code, edible mushrooms, and then number. And it's got a good, good, clear, concise way of doing it. So that is a good little pocketbook for you for in the woods. So that is my number eight, bookwise. So again. I like to pair the all my wild edibles, all my mushrooms with, um, of course, the phone apps. And I'll go through those in a minute with you. A couple of other books. These are historical books now. I, I don't have a picture of David Thompson's journal with me because I, I, I listened to an audible and I, then I deleted my account. So I can't really go through that one. But uh, this, is, this is the other book I would recommend. Samuel Hearn's. Nor a journey to the Northern Ocean. Uh, it's a great book. Um, again, these two guy, these two gentlemen were around during the front, frontier times in the Hudson's Bay Company, and they were they are they were a couple of the crucial characters that helped discover and survey, in uh, David Thompson's terms, um, a lot of Canada. And brilliant books. You get a lot of information from them. A lot of information about the indigenous. Um, tribes and, and people in Canada it, it will really open open your eyes up if you can if you can get both of these books and of course these two characters crossed at the same point so that you'll, you'll hear Samuel Hearn mentioned in David Thompson's journal um, quite a few times as well so very good books uh, for, for historical information because uh, of course that's a good place to learn this stuff is uh, back in the past where they were living they were living this way and uh, they didn't, didn't have houses like we do nowadays so that's that one so here i have four apps that i like to use in conjunction with my wild edible plants books first one i'm going to go through is my is edible plant guide this one on the left here so i'll click that to show you and it gives you a disclaimer make sure you don't poison yourself use wisely and then we're into the main menu so here you can see Go through a little uh, introduction, and then uh, you select category. Go through berries, daisy-like flowers. So you know, I shows you daisy-like flowers. Oh, click that a bit. And then you've got trees. And say, let's click on older. We can click on older. It'll give you a few pictures. The pictures aren't amazing, and they don't have too many. And it varies between what plants you're looking for, but it does give you a lot of good information about what 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 the plant is made up of and and what it can be used for, both medicinally and uh, edible edibility wise. So that's uh, that's that's one good thing about this app. Also, you can see diagnosis at the bottom there. So let's look into uh, allergies, for instance. And of course, then I go through all the all the good plants for different allergies. So let's look at licorice. So wow, there's a lot, a lot of a lot of information on licorice. Of course, it'll show you what the plant looks like. And uh, of course, you use in conjunction with the books and other apps too. And you can't go wrong. It tells you a lot of information about the vit the, the vitamin content. And the edibility, etc. So. That is my that is edible plant guide, and that's your A to Z. So there you see, there's tons. There's a lot to go through. So that's a very good one for you to get. It's free, so I would recommend it entirely. Um, next one, I'm going to go through. We'll stick with the wild edibles for now. This is uh, wild edibles with wild man Steve Steve Brill and friends. This one is a paid app to get the full version, but it has some very good pictures on there. 
Let's click on uh, American Barberry. So you can download all the pictures in high definition. So let's identify it and click on the picture. And it should eventually load up images. It'll load up different images for me. And then I click at the top when it loads. It's a little slow. But it gives you a description of the bottom of the plant. And there will be more pictures when they want to load. It's a little bit temperamental, this app. But uh, one thing I do like about this app is it not only tells you where to find it and how to find it, it tells you uses and it gives you it give you recipes too. If I can get it there. No, oh, that's identified. There you go. Recipes, harvesting, food, nutrition, cooking. So there you go. You may also pickle the berries, puree, cook berries in fruit juice, etc. So yeah, it's a very good, very good app. Um, it doesn't cover tons because I guess it's still in, it's still being built, and the identification process is still in the making. So yeah, but I'd recommend it for sure. I'd pay the, the couple of bucks that it's that it's charging for it just just to have it as extra extra information on your phone. So that's Wild Edibles by uh, Wild Man Steve Brill. Next one, Book of Mushrooms. To go with my mushroom book over there. This one is a wonderful app. It's got hundreds, 166 species of edible mushrooms there. Um, let's click on that one, on this one here. Tells you the season between July and October. It tells you classification and it gives you a good description. And its uses. And as you can see, there's some good, great pictures and uh, lots of easy ways to identify these things. Always be careful with mushrooms because if you mess it up, they can potentially be fatal. So don't don't play around unless don't eat them unless you're 110 percent sure that they're edible. Uh, another good thing about I like I like about this app too is it it's got your edible edible species, the inedible species. And also, it's got a mushroom calendar, so I can I can look to see when these mushrooms are, are in season. So let's look at Bitter Baliti, which is this one here. Comes into into season in July, all the way through till October. So that's uh, that's a uh, that's a great little app for you. Gives you the months. Uh, I believe that was free. this one was free too. So it's great, great, great little app and. Hunting time. There you go. It tells you what's around at this time of year right now. So that's your edible mushrooms. Let's go back. If I let me, let's click out that one. Click out that one and next. Load them up. Last one but not least, this was my my most recent one I got was is a plant net, and this one here is a basically a group site where people are identifying plants posting the pictures up and you can get help identifying plants too so what you do is you you'll you'll basically click on the camera you you can either take a photo of a plant or you can uh which will load straight up to the uh the website or you can take a photo with your phone and save it for later when you have a data signal then identify it later on so these are some berries I found in the woods when I was out the other day so I want to identify those so let's click on them let's add image new plant let's try that again press gallery and click on those berries and of course then it comes up with choose the organ of the plant you're trying to identify of course trying to identify the fruit and it's searching of course this uses your data and then you, you can go through and basically pick the, the closest uh, identifying plant to it. And confirm it. And it will tell you give you some information on that plant too. So a great little app. I uh, love the concept. It will definitely help a lot with, uh, with your plant ID. Um, and speed things up a little bit. Especially for those who are teaching themselves. And uh, don't have the... Don't have the help of an instructor at the moment. So, yeah. So, that's four edible plant apps that I like to use in conjunction with my books. And, uh, yeah, try them out. Um, and like I said, three of them are free. I had to pay money for the Wild Edibles one. And I will also get pictures of the these apps, the larger pictures, for on the video to show you at the end. So, or in between each name that I name. So I hope that was helpful for you. Thanks for thanks again.
Hopefully that was helpful for you. Uh, that, that was my top 10 books and uh, four of my, the apps that I like to use uh, help me out in the woods, especially the wild edible ones. Always keep, keep in mind, use multiple ways to identify edible plants and ideally get an instructor to show you um, what's what because you can go seriously wrong out there and maybe poison yourselves uh, to the point of death. So uh, yeah, just be careful out there. Um, hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for watching. Uh, as always, please click my logo in the corner and subscribe. That's uh, that be a big help for me. I'm trying to hit the magic number of 1,000. And take care, like, share, and definitely subscribe, like I just said. Thanks for watching. And Thank you.